Hey, how you doing? Hope you all are doing great. As you've seen in the thumbnail, in this video, we are going to see what if Naruto got in a harem with Gwen, Heather, and Bridget. This is part five, and before getting into video, I request you to check the author of this fanfic and show some love and support. Name of the story is Total Drama Preview by Blackheart0009. Do check it out. All details and description. And if you want next part of this series, please leave a like, share, and consider subscribe. Let's get into the video. Also check out Patreon for uncensored spicy content. Link in description. Outside, two days went by. Naruto was relaxing on the steps of his cabin as Duncan craved skull on the wall before Harold stepped out of their room with a glare. Okay, who made S. Mores out of my underwear? The nerd pointed at the sandwiched underwear, causing the punk and redhead to laughing at him. Harold scowled as Duncan and some of the other boys laughed. Oh man, I forgot we did that. Gosh, you're like always picking on me for no reason. Harold said defensively. No, it's because you went back on your word. Duncan pointed out. You think we would just leave you alone if you went back to your degusting habit? It wasn't me. Harold yanked out one of his underwear and it landed in front of Courtney. EW. The C cried out before glared at the nerd. Harold, you are so totally gross. Yeah, Aeromegane. Naruto chuckled with Duncan as Harold tried to explain to fuming Courtney. The nerd growled at them before slamming the door. I hate him, Harold muttered. You're the one that threw them at Courtney, Jeff pointed out. It's not his fault you messed up. Sometimes he just makes it too easy. The punk chuckled. Yeah, he shouldn't break promise and leaving his underwear all over the room again. Naruto nodded with a grin. Listen up, you little maggots. Chef's voice roared out of the loudspeaker. I want all campers to report to the dock of shame at 0900 hours. The campers looked at each other in confusion. That mean now, soldiers. Now. Chef's roar snapped the confused campers out causing them to running to the location. The campers groaned. God, I forgot about this, Gwen muttered, rubbing her forehead. This is going to suck, Trent added, feeling pity for their counterparts. Chef just cackled with glee. He had fun this challenge. Doc, line up and stand at attention. The drill sergeant chef barked at the campers. You call this a proper formation? The cooker walked by them while hitting them with a pointer stick. Feet together. Arms down. Eyes forward. Head up. He finished up by hitting Harold many times since the nerd kept making mistakes. Why do you have to do that? Harold asked. Because you were being one of the worst soldiers I ever had to train. Chef shouted the real Marines would have eaten you alive. Oh, this is going to be a fun day. Gwen whispered to Trent with sarcasm. What did you say, Solitor? Chef roared in her face with megaphone. Um, noting. The goth girl sputtered. And you'll continue to say nothing until I tell you that you can say something. Chef growled before turns to another side. Today's challenge will not be an easy one. In fact, I do not expect everyone to come out alive. Owen snickered to himself before Chef hit him with the stick. Ah, that hurts. The sergeant ignored him as he raised his megaphone. My orders are to make sure all of the maggots in front of me drop out of my boot camp, except one. Chef explained as he stomped by the campers. The last one standing wins immunity for their team. Straightforward but brutal. Chris added with a laugh, excellent work, my friend. I try, Chef added, though I have some new ways to train them up a bit. The rest of the cast gulped nervously, hoping Chris never got a new season up and running. On um, what happened to Chris? Heather asked, but it fell upon deaf ears. Rule number one, you will address me as Master Chief. Have you got that? Yes, Master Chief. The campers said in unison. Halo much? No, a joke, getting some Snickers. That was until Chef roared. What was that maggot? You will sleep when I tell you to sleep, and you will eat only when I tell you to eat. Chef glared at them. Is that clear? Yes. Master Chief. Rule number two, when you're ready to give up, you will walk to the end of the dock and ring the bell. The sergeant pointed at the hanging bell. Which brings me to rule number three. Let's get one quitter before the end of the first day. That day will not end until someone drops out. That make everyone gulp. Now get your asses down to the beach, soldiers. Now, now, now. Chef barked as everyone ran past him in terror. Beach, listen up. Chef said as he glanced at the teams that stands in front of two canoe. Each team must hold a canoe over their heads. I catch you taking your hands off the canoe and you will be eliminated. He narrowed his eyes and no one eats lunch until someone drops out. But we barely got to eat breakfast, Harold pointed out. That was the point. Chef cried. And you have no room to complain. You all should have let someone quit if you wanted lunch. Viva. 
Harold whined, canoes up. The sergeant yelled as the teams lift their canoes over their heads. Phew. Owen chuckled. This isn't that hard. Yeah, I'll say. Trent nods his head with a grin and Naruto shakes his head. They don't have any idea what they are getting into. Chef nodded as the rest groaned, recalling how hard it was holding those cannons up. No one knows how many hours have passed, but their arms were starting to feel the strains. Come on, you sissies. It's only been three hours now. Chef shouted to let them know how long it has been. Chef scoffed. You are all babies. The Marines lifted heavier stuff over their heads for longer than that. Looks like they missed lunch today. Chris chuckled. He just showed up an hour ago. Mm. Chef nodded. Guess they just weren't hungry, unless someone wants to quit now. He looks down at them. It turns out that the host and the sergeant were sitting on top of the canoes so they can force someone to drop out. Why did you have one on each canoe? Courtney asked as her team was the one holding Chef. Chris is much lighter than Chef. Your team had a greater amount of stronger maggots, Chef said with a shrug. So I sat on yours. It made it even so the producers would not say we were playing favorites. Like we would anyways, Chris added with a grin. Owen's stomach growled loudly and Courtney snarled. Don't even think about it. No one noticed Naruto secretly hooked Harold's underwear with a fishing rod as Duncan smirked from behind the redhead. Slowly, Naruto reeled his rod before turns his head to the smirking punk. Time to land this fish. Duncan snickered before Naruto jerked the rod, causing the nerd to cry out in pain. Morons! Harold yelled as the pranksters give him an innocent looks. Is there a problem down here? The nerd quickly holds the canoe as Chef looks down with a glare. No! Harold whined before glared at the snickering pranksters. Why don't you yell at them for placing their hands off the canoes? Harold asked, because I did not see them for one. Chef responded with a growl, and second, they were not the ones drawing my attention. Part of me is impressed, actually. To perform the task without drawing anyone's attention takes some real skill. Naruto glanced at the sky and blinked. He didn't notice it was dark already. Right now, Chef was telling them a war story. Twenty-five of us went in the jungle that night. The sergeant said, staring into the fire, only five of us come back out. What well, were you in, anyway? Gwen asked. Permission to speak, sir? Nardo asked out of blue. Permission granted. Gwen, I wouldn't ask that if I were you, Databeo. Nardo said it's not a good idea to ask about the war if someone lose so many. Chef made a small grunting noise, but he had a small smile on his face. His respect for the brat went even higher now. That's right. Chef nodded his head before glared at the goth girl. Did I ask you to speak? because I don't remember asking you to speak. You also don't ask Naruto to speak. Gwen said with raised eyebrow. He asked permission like a good soldier, Chef said with a huff. Because he asked me for my permission, Chef said with a shrug. A good soldier always asks permission first. Gwen rolled her eyes. She don't feel like arguing right now. Whatever. He so wasn't in a war. She whispered that last part to her team. Gwen actually winced here. She recalled seeing the bullet scars on Chef from the Fear episode and didn't even want to ask if that was real for Chef or not. However, she did say, Chef, what? Chef huffed annoyed at the campers on the screen. I want apologies, Gwen said with a sigh. I was out of line back then. Chef looked at Gwen surprised and he was not the only one. Finally, Chef said, apology accepted maggot. But don't think I won't get on your case if you or your counterpart does anything to annoy me. That's fair. Gwen muttered before she added to herself, I guess. Guys, I can't do this anymore. Lindsay groaned before dropping her arms. I have no more feeling in my arms. She stumbled toward the dock. Looks like we got ourselves a quitter. Chef smirked. Lynn? Owen whispered, feeling bad that he can't do anything to help the bombshell as she rang the bell. The teams give out relieved sighs as they put down their canoes. Listen here, Chef said as he patted Lindsay's shoulder. You have nothing to be ashamed of. He pulls out the megaphone and roared at her, except being a little baby that let your team down. As for the rest of you, head to the mess hall. Dinner is served. Sweet Marie. Thank you. Owen drooled at idea of having dinner. Main Lodge. Chef barked, all right, maggots. Open your ears. You've got 10 minutes to eat before night training begins, so get to it. Oh man, Cody whispered, must be rough there. You have no idea, little dude. Jeff replied, rubbing his arms. He hated that challenge. Night training? Someone gasped, no way. Um, excuse me, Master Chief. Where's the food? Gwen asked with a raised eyebrow. You're looking at it. Chef chuckled, gesturing at the trash cans. Owen lifted the lid and turned to the sergeant. 
This is the leftover garbage from this morning's breakfast. Damn right. When you're at war, you take what you can eat. Chef grunted as Naruto walks up to the trash can and digging out some foods. The redhead checked his garbage foods for anything before eating it as some camper's face become green. Dude really can eat anything, Chris said. He can not only handle chef's food, but also eating from the trash. I'm impressed, Chef said. Too bad we never had the brat on the show. He sounds like it would be fun. Heather scowled, not surprised with Naruto's actions, but what he is doing embarrass her there. He better not make me regret calling him about this. Man, how can you eat it? DJ groaned, forcing his bile down. Mm -hmm. Naruto blinked as he glanced at the giant. It's not bad if you get past the taste. A little trick I pick up from Wilson San, Databeo. Who's Wilson? Duncan asked with raised eyebrow. Someone who works with one of the circuses. He was a homeless before, and his talent was that he can eat rocks, so he was billed as the rock eater. Naruto chuckled at the camper's paled faces. Well, he beats me. Owen giggled. Even I can't eat a rock. Surprising, really, Duncan admitted. He didn't think there was anyone that could eat something that Owen could not. Well, I can see you've got this under control. Chris said, turns his head to Chef. I'm off to craft service. Coming? Serve me up some of that. Chef nodded as he followed his boss out. Some of the campers start to digging out of the trash cans while some of them complained about the foods. I am so not going to eat these. Courtney groaned out of disgust. Don't care for today's specials, princess? Duncan mocked as he carrying a drink. I'm going to be running for office one day. The CIT growled with crossed arms. No one is going to pull up a file of me eating garbage. How's that working out for you? Heather asked with a smirk as Courtney glared at her. The punk rolled his eyes at Courtney as he walked up to Harold and Naruto. Hey, Harold, we felt really bad about the whole underwear fishing incident thing. So here, we found you some apple juice. Duncan said, presenting Harold with a drink. Thank. Harold said before he drinks it, and Naruto raised his eyebrows. The nerd swallowed with a wince before spitting it out as soon as Duncan told him it was kitchen grease. Wait a minute. Didn't you said that you were allergic to apple? Databeo, Naruto said with tilted head, and almost all of the campers blinked, recalling the trust challenge. Hey, wait, Duncan said sitting up, whiskers right. You did say that last episode, and I seem to recall you saying something similar in our challenge, Courtney added with a glare. The rest realized what was going on and glared to Harold, who was trying to make himself look small. Katie then shouted, You should have been the one kicked off, not Sadie. Dude, seriously? Noah said, shaking his head. If you're going to lie to get out of a challenge, not that you needed to, at least make sure to keep it going so you don't get figured out later. Not cool, brah, DJ said shaking his head. But it doesn't matter. Harold cried. It was for something else, and it was years ago. Still you try to play us, Trent said, and the fact remains you took advantage of US because of it. But, but, Harold tried before he turned to Lashana. Lashana? The sister, however, shook her head. Boy, don't talk to me right now. Oh. Bridget growled. I can't believe you. Yeah. You're a fucking liar. Duncan sneered, and the nerds sweated at the camper's glares. Chef and Chris, the host, and the cooker were eating their dinner before Chris speaks up. You know, something about this redhead kept bothering me a lot. Um, what do you mean? Chef raised his eyebrow, and the host rubbed his forehead. I don't know every time when this kid said databeo. It makes me think of something that I can't even remember. This and his red hair is kind of familiar for some reason. Chris hummed in thought. You know I'm right. There is something about this Naruto character that keeps bugging me. Like what? Chef asked. No idea, Chris admitted. I have a feeling he reminds me of someone I once knew. Well, I can't help you there. The cooker shrugged. I'm no shrink or mind reader. Maybe you'll remember it right away or later, so don't bother thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Why worry about the kid when I have to worry about the ratings? Chris chuckled as Chef rolled his eyes at his boss. Heather raised a brow thinking, why do I have a feeling I am not going to like where that is going? Outside, it took the campers about 20 minutes to finish their dinner until Chef come back and told them that they have to follow his actions while the music is playing. Some of the campers groan when they hear the thriller music as they mimic Chef's dance move. The sergeant does a few hip thrusts before Duncan turns the boom box off, drawing some gas from the campers. Duncan blinked at the boom box because he can hear the music and everyone glanced at Naruto. He was humming the song with his eyes closed and still doing the thriller dance. Once again, Heather rolled her eyes for another reason. Confession. Idiot has a few weaknesses. Heather deadpan with crossed arms, and thriller is one of them. Static. Naruto danced around in the stall, 
still humming the song. Kid got taste, I can give him that. Chef grunted with a smirk. Duncan, what are you doing? Courtney shouted at the punk. One of us drops out, we're done for the day. Duncan said with crossed arms as he glared at Chef. We're done when I say we're done. Chef growled, now drop and give me 20. Duncan rolled his eyes, dropping to do some push-up, and the sergeant turned to his head to the campers. Anyone else got anything they want to say? Oh, yeah. Gwen raised her hand as she fidgeted around. Can I go to the bathroom? Gwen groaned. Should have kept my mouth shut. Sure. Here's the mop and bucket. Chef tossed her the set objects with a cruel smirk, and Gwen sighed as she carries them to the bathroom. Now it's thriller time. They resumed their dance routine. Main Lodge, for your next challenge. Chef announced as he stand in front of the teams with his arms behind his back. You will complete a 300s word to say about how much you love me. Anyone who falls asleep or fails to complete the challenge will be eliminated. Oh man, Owen whispered to himself before the camper starts to write down their essay. On question? Owen asked, raising his hand. Chef sighed what? How is this supposed to be training? Owen asked, too afraid to ask the first time. It shows respect to your commanding officer, Chef stated, and it teaches you to work under pressure with a task you do not enjoy doing. Yeah, right, Duncan muttered, rolling his eyes. Few hours went by, and everyone was tired before the alarm rang out, a signal that the essay challenge had ended as Chef collected the papers. Crap. Harold groaned. Chef cleared his throat before he read the first paper out loud, I love Master Chief Hatchet, because he is very, 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 very... He continued to repeating very over and over before he figured it out. This is just one sentence with five pages of very in between. Chef glared at Duncan. 300 words like you asked. Duncan reminded him. You didn't say they had to be in different sentences. It was implied. It's 300 words exactly. Duncan smirked coyly. You can count them if you want. Chef growled, walks over to the table, before slipped on Owen's drool puddle. Wipe up that drool, you little maggot. The sergeant roared as he gets up on his feet with drool stains. He slammed his hand on table, and he stares down at sleeping Trent and DJ. Trent, DJ, you two slackers are out. The rest of you, get to bed and report to the playing field at 0500 hours. Uh, missed a spot there, General. Duncan smirked. Boy. Do you want to run 50 laps around this camp right now? Chef snarled before Courtney pulls the punk back. No thanks. He's going straight to bed, aren't you? The CID glared at the punk. What are you trying to do? Get eliminated? Oh, you care so much, Duncan teased. Up yours, Courtney said, though she did not meet him in the eyes. I didn't know you cared. Duncan smirked. I don't. I just don't want to lose this challenge. So stop being such a screw-up and do what you're told for once, okay? Courtney growled with narrowed eyes before she stomped away. She so wants me. Duncan whispered to Nardo with a smirk. Big time, Dadabeo. The redhead chuckled. Duncan laughed. Man, I love this kid. We all do. Izzy reminded him, I love it when we get some whiskers time of our own. But he's not real, Beth reminded Izzy. I'll find my whisker time. Idiot, you are never going to be getting a moment's rest here. Heather thought, shaking her head. Woods, the teams, and the sergeant stood in front of the obstacle course. It was not there a few hours ago, Databeo. Naruto raised his eyebrows at the sight before glancing at the panting interns. He wondered where did total drama get these handy interns from? Wouldn't you like to know? Chris Mock teased with a smirk. You will all run this course until you can all complete it in under one minute. Am I making myself clear? Chef said right in Duncan's face with a glare. Crystal. Duncan smirked and the sergeant take a step back. Mm, it looks easy to do. Naruto tapped his chin as he scanned the course. Duty did not just say that, Jeff laughed. There's like no one he can do that so easily, Harold added with a scoff. Shall we add to our wager? Duncan asked and Harold nodded, even though he was already behind in his debt to Duncan. Duncan wasn't sure if the new kid could do it or not, but he was willing to wager against Harold as he has proven everyone wrong before. Oh, really? Chef crossed his arms. Why don't you show us how easy it is go? Naruto sprinted quickly towards the wall before placing his hands on the ground and flipped himself over the wall. The redhead smirked as he jumped over the pit without using the rope and ran up to the suspending tires, pulling a corkscrew jump through the tire easily. The teams dropped their jaws with widened eyes as Naruto slide under the swinging axes, crossed the finish line. Tajda! The redhead laughed after taking a good look at their face. It was all under a minute, almost 30 seconds. Dude, someone whispered. Everyone was gapping at the screen. Even Heather, as she has not seen Naruto pull anything like this off in front of her before. 
Chef was wide-eyed as was Chris. Dayawamam, Chef finally exclaimed. That was, I don't even know what else to say. Man, I wish we had him on the show even more, Chris stated. With his skill and unknowingly causing so much drama, our ratings would be through then roof. Forget that, Chef said. I want to see if he could pull that off for real. That was something even the guys in my old unit could not pull off so fast. You can sit this one out, soldier. Chef said with widened eyes. Heather rolled her eyes. Why does her idiot always love to show off? Heather rolled her eyes, being the first to recover. Tell me about it. I forgot he would be like that. Gwen noticed this and narrowed her eyes. Confession. Dayawamam. Chef said astounded, holding his head. Not even a soldier in my unit can do this. Static. Well, it was easy to do parkour, since it goes hand in hand with circus training. Naruto grinned, rubbing his head. How can he make this look so easy? Cody asked, and no one was able to answer. Duncan, however, smirked at Harold, who scowled with his arms crossed. Come on, guys, you can do it, Databeo. Naruto encouraged his fellow campers as they ran through the course with a lot of struggle. Who do you think will drop out first? Chef asked, snickered as DJ slipped on the mud. Mm, I guess Harold, since he's, well, you know. The sergeant nodded his head, agreed with the brat. Hey, Harold cried out. I could have done it. You failed worse than most recruits. Chef corrected him. The said nerd struggled to get up on top of the wall before fall down and landed in the mud face down. Look like you're right. Chef muttered before Harold lifts his head and vomit out mud. The sergeant and the redhead walk up to the vomiting nerd as Duncan turned to them. Uh, General Crazy, we've got a situation here. The punk pointed at the nerd with his thumb. Too much mud? Harold vomited out mud every time he says a word. Harold scowled though his checks were slightly pink. Chef picks the nerd up by his collar and said, Ring the bell and report to the infirmary. Your tour of duty is finished. Wow, poor guy. Duncan jeered. Back on the course, maggots now. Chef roared at the punk. One false move, and I'll be on you like stink on a poop wagon. I look forward to it, sir. Duncan smirked, and the sergeant scowled at him as the punk returned to his course. Confession. There's always one rebel maggot among maggots. Chef muttered. Duncan scoffed. I live to be a rebel. You just happened to ignore it until that moment. And where did that lead, you smart guy? Chef asked, causing the punk to scowl. Fallen solider, I salute you. Duncan joked as he crawled by sinking Lashana before stopped in front of Chef's boots. You just brought yourself 20 more push-ups. Chef shooted. Thank you. Duncan mocked before he pecked Sergeant's nose and Chef growled with veins popping out. You really shouldn't have done that, Gwen pointed out. Okay, I'll admit I might have stepped over the line there. I think you may have made him snap. Bridget whispered to the punk. I think you're right. Duncan gulped. One night, solitary confinement in the boathouse. Chef roared with fury and everyone screamed out of fear. Big deal. Duncan rolled his eyes. How scary can it be? The punk chuckled before the sergeant grabbed him by collar and dragged him to the boathouse. Me and my big mouth, the punk muttered. Main Lodge. Courtney glanced out of the window as the teams were relaxing with their gruel after finished up with the course. I'm going to check on him, Courtney said, standing up with her bowl. You like him a lot. Owen snickered. Maybe it's more than like Databeo. Naruto smirked. I do not like him. Courtney yelled at them with a lightly blush on her face. Oh, really? Duncan asked, earning a splash from Courtney's soda. Yeah, and your blushing face doesn't agree with you. Naruto chuckled as the city's face turned red. And not only do I not like him, Courtney coughed, trying to calm herself down. I can't stand him. He's rude, rebellious, and totally annoying. I'm going to check on him. She ran out of the main lodge. You're not fooling anyone, girl, Lashana, inform her. Naruto turned to Owen and DJ with a grin. She so Sundra, Databeo. Courtney gapped at the screen for the suggestion while Heather laughed. It was about time someone else was called that. They both nodded before Bridget sat down next to Naruto. Hey, Breachon, I felt like I haven't seen you for a while. The surfer nodded her head. Yeah, Chef is working us so hard that I barely talk to anyone for a while. Me too. DJ groaned, rotating his arms around, and winced as he feels some pops in his muscle. True, but I kind of find this challenge enjoyable and fun, Databeo. Naruto grinned as his teammates rolled their eyes. The boy is crazy, Lashana said, getting nods all around. After a few bites, Owen looked up in wonder before swallowed his foods. Hey, Nara, can I ask you something? Naruto nod his head. What does Databeo mean? You kept saying a lot. Harold smirked. Now we get to hear the secret code he has been saying all alone. Oh, yeah, I've been wondering about that for a while. 
Bridget said with curiosity. Well, Naruto scratched his nose with a little blush. It really has no meaning at all. The base raised their eyebrows, and the redhead chuckled at their expression. It's just a dialect or verbal tick, something that I got from Kasan. Harold gapped at the screen. Say what? He cried. What was that about a code, dude? Cody asked. But, but, who says something that doesn't have a meaning to it? Harold was having a hard time understanding it. He said it was a verbal tick. Trent pointed out he can't help but say it. Almost can't help it. Heather mused as she recalled a time Naruto held back his tick to not scare this one girl they hanged out with one summer when her folks were on vacation. Though it did backfire on me afterwards. Besides, he says all sorts of crap that doesn't mean anything, Duncan added. No, I don't, Harold claimed. Yeah, you do. And everyone else will say so as well. Duncan added. Harold looked to the others as they either nodded, shrugged, or gave him wishy-washy sighs. That's odd and interesting. DJ said, you really take a lot of things after your mom. Owen grinned, and Naruto nodded his head as they finished up their gruel dinner. The redhead stretched his arms out with a lightly groan. Well, I don't know you guys, but I'm going back to cabin and relax for a bit, Databeo. Everyone nodded their head, agreeing with the redhead since they were still tired after the course. Killer base cabin. Hey guys. Duncan grinned as he sat on the steps with Courtney. Bags in their hands, and both of the teams blinked at them. Chef blinked. Why are you out of the boathouse? Duncan shrugged, not caring. The punk thought they were lucky he stayed as long as he did. What are you doing out of boathouse? Harold glared with a scowl. Whatever. Duncan shrugged. Courtney and I just swiped a lot of good foods. He showed them the contents inside the bags and glanced at the gopher's team. You guys can come inside, and we'll have a party. Chef blinked before he growled at them. I'm in for the foods. Lashana grinned, and her team nodded. They really want to have some good foods, unlike these gruel and trash foods. The gophers entered the base boys' room and starts to share foods as they chatted with each other. Katie and Trent was chatting about the music and random topics. Odin, you got jam all over your face. Lindsay giggled as she wiped some off with her finger and tasted it, drawing a blush out of the oaf. Thank Lind. Owen giggled nervously with blush as some campers smirked at the blonde couple. While it's still weird to see the two of you act like that, Beth said, Lindsay shrugged. I find it nice they are able to hang out so easily, even when liking each other. Tyler looked down, but looked up determined to take Lindsay on a date after this. How long do you think it will take until they get together? Lashana whispered to Gwen and Bridget. Both of them said it will be pretty soon if it keeping going well between them before starting to talk about Chef. Oh, course. Harold cried out loud as everyone turns to see him lifting the blanket off, revealing a smiley face draw with peanut butter. Now see, that's a waste of good peanut butter. Duncan snickered and Naruto nodded. I know. Owen frowned, hating seeing food get wasted. Courtney takes the last ice cream sandwich before Bridget touches her hand. Okay. I think you had enough. Oh no, no, just one more. The sea giggled as she pulled her hand back before swallowed the sandwich whole and burped loudly. Oh. That one was a mistake. She ran out to vomiting as Gwen and Lashana giggled. Don't say we didn't told you so, Bridget added with a smile. Don't say I didn't warn her. Bridget rolled her eyes and Naruto chuckled as he watches Duncan walks out to talk with Courtney. Idiot, open this jar for me. Heather grunted, shoving the jelly jar in Naruto's hand. I need to make a sandwich before the fatty eats it all up. Sure, he chon. He handed the open jar back to her. I see that your cold is gone now, Databeo. Yeah. The queen bee grunted as she made her own sandwich and sat down next to Naruto. She cut it in half before eat one piece, handing the other piece to the redhead. Eat it, idiot. If Owen and Lindsay is strange, this one really takes the cake, Gwen said, and almost everyone nodded. Thank. Naruto smiled at her, and Heather's expression gets softer as few of gophers raise their eyebrow at Heather's behavior. He glanced at the doorway to see Courtney kissing Duncan and chuckled as he stand up and walk out with DJ. Well, well, Nardo put his arm around the punk's shoulders as Courtney walks to the bathroom to wash herself up. Someone got very lucky. Told you she wants me so badly. Duncan nudged the redhead's stomach and they laughed. What can I say? Duncan gloated with a smirk. The ladies love me. This earned him one splash from soda and a bucket of popcorn to his head. Yeah, look like I own you a few bucks. DJ chuckled, and the punk nods his head. Neither of them noticed Harold glared at them with an ugly sneer on his face. Attention, remaining boot camper group. The next evolution of your next training will begin tomorrow at 0700 hours. 
and if I caught the sucker that took my dessert, your ass is mine. Chef's voice bellowed out of nowhere as the campers glanced around for the cooker. Duncan and Courtney glanced up at the steaming chef and were actually kind of nervous. I think we finally pissed him off this time, Trent said with widened eyes. It turns out that Chef's voice was so loud that he don't even need the megaphone or a loudspeaker. You can bet your ass I was, Chef said. And while I know who messed with me, I might not be able to punish you know I will find a way to get back at you two maggots. Courtney and Duncan looked very nervous and were now really wishing that Chris did not get a new season of Total Drama Up. Woods. The next morning, the campers were forced to hanging on the tree's branches upside down and most of remaining campers dropped out. It was down to Naruto, Duncan and Courtney against Gwen and Heather as Chef walked under them. What you are experiencing is an ancient form of torture. By now, the blood has begun rushing down to your head. The next stage is nausea, followed by dizziness and a flushed appearance. Duncan was starting to show the said signs. As the blood begins to pool in your eyes, you may experience fainting spells. I hated that, Jeff muttered. It was simple and yet effective not to mention how he acted when under the effects. The punk gave out and falls down to the ground as Courtney cried out for him. It's okay, he's all right. Bridget called out after checked on Duncan before Heather fall down with a groan. She slipped because of her sweat. He chan, you okay? Naruto asked, only to get a shout from the Queen Bee as she stomped to the bathroom to clean herself from sweat. At least answer the boy nicely, Lashana said to the Queen Bee. He's pretty much the only one that cares for you. I think I cared, Lindsay pointed out before Beth reminded her of a few facts. It's good thing that we have you, Courtney said, glancing at the redhead teammate. Actually, I've never been hanging upside down this long, so I may drop any time. Naruto admitted he had been working as acrobat for a while, and this challenge is more brutal than the acrobat training. Can't be that different, DJ said. They hand upside down too, right? While moving, and they flip back up for their axe. Noah reminded them, I don't think they stay upside down for that long. What? Ah, ah, ah. Courtney started to laugh for no reason, and Naruto turns his head to her with a concerned look. Stop laughing this instant. Chef Barked, sorry. Courtney laughed, I can't stop laughing. The CA kept laugh before she falls down with a thump. The sergeant frowned at Courtney with fists on his hip. I expected more out of you, soldier. Courtney looked down embarrassed even with that she expected herself to do better. Ahem. The sea cleared her throat. Master Chief, I just have one thing to say to you. And what might that be? You really need to take a chill pill. Courtney turns on her heels and walk away as Chef's cheeks puffed out with fires in his eyes. Everyone stared at the CIT with dropped jaws. Totally unexpected, Duncan said before he grinned and hot. That's what I'm talking about. Duncan laughed wrapping his arm around Courtney's waist. Nardo, it's all up to you. Courtney shouted at the redhead. Girl, don't you lose. Lashana supported her goth friend. Oh yeah, I can hang here all day. Gwen smirked at Naruto as he sticks his tongue out at her. Gwen rolled her eyes, mature much, though she did have a small smile on her face. Like everyone else here? Lashana asked. Good point. Duncan raised a brow, seeing Gwen look at Naruto. No, not yet. I know she could have a thing for him, but I need more than a gut feeling. A few hours went by, and no one know how it will end until the redhead groaned as he turns his head to base team. Say what? DJ rubbed his head before Naruto repeated it over and over. Chris hummed out loud, rubbing his chin. It's been a while since I had to understand Japanese, but I think he says something along the lines of feeling dizzy and that's he's sorry. Since when did you speak Japanese? Chef asked. My first girlfriend is Japanese, Chris informed him. It's just been a while since I had to understand it. How else did you think I was able to make that deal in Japan for our show and commercials so easily than any one country? Good point. Hmm. My Japanese is rusty, but I believe he said that he's feeling dizzy and that he's sorry. Chris said before the campers and the cooker turns to him with raised eyebrows. When did he show up? Chris smirked, hey, I was right. Big deal, Chef muttered. As soon as the host finished his sentence, Naruto fainted and fall down, landed in Chef's arms. How come you caught him, Chef? Owen asked, how should I know? Chef yelled before he crossed his arms, though he would admit he liked the brat enough to actually do that. The gophers cheered as they pick up Gwen, and Chef called out to them with a salute. Congratulation, soldier. I'd go to war with you anytime. I'll keep it in my mind when I choose my career. 
Gwen said as the gophers carried her away from the cooker. You do that, soldier. You do that. A tear come out of chef's eye and he glared at it. Back in there, it quickly returned to his tear duct. Yo, man. DJ shakes Naruto's shoulder as the base team look at him with concern. Ha! Huh. The redhead slowly opened his eyes, but they can see his eyes spinning around. Ramen Lord, is that you? Have you come to bless me with your tasty ramen broth? Yeah, he lost it. Chris muttered. Oh boy. Bridget gulps as Naruto muttered nonsense. He'll snap out of it in a bit. Chef said as he walks past them with a chuckle. Campfire. The base team glanced behind to see Chef standing with his arm crossed before Chris spoke. I only have six marshmallows on my plate, and these marshmallows represent the campers that will continue to be campers here. Courtney rolled her eyes. You've all cast your ballots in the confession can. If I do not call your name, you must immediately go down to the dock of shame, catch the boat of losers, and go home. You can't come back, ever. Courtney, however, had a thought. Wait a second. Isn't this where Harold rigged the votes? Harold looked nervous, and Duncan said, Yeah, he did. Courtney glared at Harold. Your boy better not do it again, or so help me. Why? Harold cried. It would not be my fault. You did it though, Duncan pointed out. Just take your lumps. Whiskers, did you remember our plans? Duncan whispered to Nardo with a smirk. Yeah, I did. The redhead nodded as Chris starts to call out the campers' names. Duncan, The host handed the said campers their marshmallows before turns to Harold and Courtney. Campers. This is the final marshmallow of the night. Courtney smirked. Harold shows no reaction as he slumped. Chris glared at them. Harold. Harold gulped while Courtney screamed in fury. What? Courtney snarled at the shock campers. You guys voted for Harold over me? Yes, yes. Chris said it's always a shock. This is impossible. I demand a recount. The CIT yelled. Seriously, dude. Duncan putted his hand on Chris' shoulder with a glare. I know for a fact. There were four of us that didn't vote her off. The host ignored the punk as he snapped his fingers before Chef grabbed the CIT with Chris' help. I do not concede. Courtney screamed, dragged away to the dock of shame as Duncan followed them. Naruto frowned. Something was not right before take a gaze at Harold to see him smirking at the retreating punk. The redhead narrowed his eyes before he walked away from the campfire. Someone on to you, buddy, Trent said with a smirk. He knew Naruto was a good guy and would not let this cheating go. Outhouse stall. Naruto's eyes narrowed in anger, watching the record of Harold rig the votes and growled. When the episode ended, Harold screamed in terror as Courtney jumped from her seat and tried to strangle the nerd. Several other moved to either keep Courtney from killing the boy, keep the others from shorting Harold's punishment, or just laughed at the scene. Heather rolled her eyes, ignoring the action altogether. She did notice that her phone flashed showing she got a text message. She looked at it and found a single word. Here, Heather smirked before she stood up. I'm going to get a refill. She walked away, only getting few to glance her way. Don't wait up for me. Heather walked back into the theater with a large smirk on her face that she had trouble wiping off to avoid looking suspicious. After meeting up with her childhood friends, she told them of what had happened that day, and they were even more interesting in seeing this. Though Heather did not want them from coming in right away, but they still had a plan. They were able to find a special VIP room that actually connects to the room the rest of the TD cast were staying in. When they felt the time was right, they would come out. Heather knew Naruto loved surprising people and knew there is a best time to do so. Though she had her phone won and silent so she can text Naruto and still keep in touch. When she looked around, she saw everyone was back in their seats and the screen was not starting yet. I said you didn't have to wait for me. She muttered as she got back to her seat. We didn't, Gwen replied with a grunt. We only just got Courtney to stop killing Harold. Where were you? None of your business. Heather shot back as the episode started. Killer base cabin. The next morning, an airplane engine roared above the cabin, waking up the campers in process. Oh, come on. Duncan growled as he grabbed some of his clothes and walked out of the cabin, still angry about what happened last night at the campfire. Naruto glanced at Harold before shifting his eyes to see Owen and DJ leaving the room. Harold, get a minute? Naruto said with a frown. Make it quick. Harold scoffed. Don't push it, buddy. Duncan said with a glare. He knows your dirty little secret. Whatever, Harold scoffed with his arms crossed. I'm giving you an ultimatum. For what? I know you rigged the votes last night. The nerd paled at the revelation. You either tell the guys what you did, or I will tell them myself. Databeo. 
Naruto turns around and walk away from Harold. Duncan scoffed. I wouldn't even give him a chance to tell himself. Besides, he won't do it. At least Naruto is giving him a chance to come clean, Lashana said. He might even do the right thing. Harold started to sweat a little and did not meet anyone's eyes. Outside, Chris grinned in his airplane, glanced at the ground to make sure that all of campers are outside before he makes his airplane diving toward them. Incoming, the host laughed as the screaming campers scrambled before the airplane flew past them. Yes, I can't wait to get my pilot license. Chris cheered before widening his eyes as his plane destroyed the outhouse in the process, revealing the hiding bear. The bear whined at his close call as he hid his marshmallows behind his back, only to drop a few of marshmallows behind him. Hey! Owen cried. Those are our marshmallows. Chef glanced at Chris. So how that progress getting that license? I'm working on it, Chris muttered with a huff. Teddy, are you all right? Naruto shouted, and the bear nodded his head shakily. Just flexing your muscles for today's extreme sports challenge. Chris announced with his megaphone after stopping his airplane from crashing anything else. Uh, it's too early for this. Gwen sighed, still exhausting from the boot camp. This week you'll participate in three challenges. Chris said as he ignored the goth girl. First up, extreme sofa bed skydiving. The contestants will plummet. Chris coughed as the door opened to revealing Chef in his solitary uniform. Skydive to a waiting sofa bed target below. The cooker gave them demonstrate only to hurt himself as he crashed into the sofa bed and some campers winced. Chef scowled, crossing his arms. Those beds are defective. One reason I got them, Chris added with a shrug. Pain everywhere. Chef weint in agony. Of course, you'll be skydiving from 5,000 feet and using these. Chris smirked evilly as he tossed them a couple of old parachute. Our lucky contestants are DJ and Trent. Sure, why not? Trent nervously chuckled. You know what they say on Black Home Mountain, bro? Best glimpse of heavens on the way into hell. Let's do this. Brave words, Heather said. How did that work out for you? Trent winced. Okay, it could have gone better. DJ gulped, nodding his head. Sure, bring it. He was still afraid of the height, but he had to do it for his team. Not so fast, because the second challenge of the day is extreme rodeo moose riding. Chris shouted out of his megaphone as he hopped out of the airplane and walked over to the moose pen that mysteriously appeared out of nowhere. Contestant will rodeo ride the giant Canadian bucking moose for eight seconds or get hoofed into a giant pile of socks from the lost and found. That stink pile ain't nothing but laundry day back home. Lashana deadpanned as she waved it away before Chris stand right next to her. You didn't have to land in it, Jeff muttered. It took forever to get that stink out. At least his guy doesn't have to go through that at least. It's your lucky day, Lashana. You're riding for gophers and Owen. You'll ride for base. Sweet. Owen cheered. That is going to be so awesome. Moosey doesn't look too bucky to me. Owen chuckled as he gets closer to the moose with a grin before the moose hoofed the oaf in face. Expect for that part. Owen added, recalling that. It was kind of painful. In the final challenge, Chris held his laughter back as Owen struggled to get up. Extreme, see do water skiing. Contestant will water ski a race course grabbing as many flags they can before crossing the finish line while a member from the opposing team drives the sea dew. How can we water ski without water? Heather scoffed at the idiotic challenge. Harold recalled that challenge and had a grin on his face. His counterpart was going to be so lucky again. Heather, however, shivered having a bad feeling about this. It's really hard. Check it out. Chris gestured at Chef as he screamed on the bouncing sea dew before crashed into the tree. Awesome. The host laughed, Naruto, you'll ski for Killer Base and Lindsay for Screaming Gophers. All right, this game is in the bag, Duncan said with a grin. There's no way Naruto will mess up like Harold did. Harold frowned angrily, both for the comment and for the fact he will not to get see Heather's breast again. Cool. I can model my new bikini. Lindsay squealed, flashing some poses. Now for the cool swag. Whoever scores the most challenges get bragging rights for the night, saves there but's from elimination, and wins a tricked-out multi-message mobile shower. The girls gasped, seeing the mobile shower truck as Chef playing with the harp. Courtney went wide-eyed. We could have won that. While I'm still upset at getting tricked out, I am sort of glad I was not there to see us fail at winning it. We still have a chance, Duncan said. Naruto's helping out so we can win this time. Heather rolled her eyes before her phone, which was in her lap flashed silently as she got a text message. 
She looked at it slyly without getting anyone's attention. It was from Naruto, and it read, They really think highly of me. I'll do my best to not let them down. Heather rolled her eyes before she texted back, Knock it off, idiot. You're not playing. Can it be? Heather muttered with dreamy smile. Oh, it is. Chris chuckled as the boys rolled their eyes. Ugh, a shower? What about something good for us? Owen groaned, chewing on the marshmallow. Nothing. I'm not made out of money. Chris mumbled with a glare. You give them one good thing, and they want more. Okay. Gang, chow for breaky, then report back in 20 minutes for the Extreme Sport Challenge. The host said as he started his airplane before takeoff in the air, leaving the coughing campers in dust. Main Lodge, Naruto. The redhead turns his head to Harold as they stand in the line. Um, I'm going to tell them after the challenge. Really? Yeah. Harold sighed. Some of the other campers nodded approving of this. See, he can do the right thing, Lashana said with a smirk. Harold blinked surprised at this but said nothing. That's good. Just don't do it again, Databeo. Naruto smiled. I promise not to do it again. Harold stuttered, and the redhead nodded before walk off. Never noticed the nerd smirked as he revealed his cross fingers. This caused many of them to gasp. Don't tell me, Katie said. Naruto, pay attention. Sadie cried, waving her arms. You were saying, Duncan asked to stun Lashana. Harold looked nervous as Lashana glared at him. Oh, I cannot believe you, boy. He was giving you a chance, and you all but throw it back in his face. Not cool, man, Cody added, shaking his head. But it wasn't me. Harold tried to defend himself. Heather was glaring at the screen. The nerd better pray. He doesn't do anything to idiot or I'm going to kick him where it hurts. Owen scraped the leftover foods on one plate before swallow it whole and handed the plate to Chef as Gwen and Bridget stares at him with widened eyes. The oaf belched out a love letter before it landed on the stacking plates. Sweet grubs, bro. Owen said as he walks out of the main lodge. Owen blinked. When did I eat a love letter? You think I would have noticed? Harold, however, glared at Owen for eating his love letter. Was that a reason that she did not get all of them for the girl with smoldering eyes? Chef muttered as he read the love letter before flicking it to the table with a shrug and heading for the kitchen to wash the dirty plates. Bridget picked the love letter up as Gwen leaned in to read it. Check it out. It's a corny haiku poem. The goth girl said with a smile. It wasn't corny, Harold said. It kind of was Bridget said with a shrug. Whoa. Bridget giggled some dudes crushing big time. It's probably for you. Really? Gwen jumped in shock. I was going to say it was for you. No offense, girls, but neither of you two can match up to this. Lashana teased. Look is this perfect booty. Of course it was about me. None taken, Gwen said to her friend. Besides, now knowing they're from Harold, I am glad they were not for me. Ditto. Bridget added with a smile. Harold scowled all the while at this. But Trent is totally crushing on you. I've seen the way he always scams an extra muffin for you. Bridget smirked at the blushing goth girl. Trent and Gwen shared a look and a small smile remembering the good old times before they broke it off. Yeah, but Nardo must be the one that wrote it. Gwen said, but then again, he's kind of dense, so there's no reason for him to write a haiku poem. The surfer girl sighed as she nodded her head, and the goth girl winced. Um, or he may start to have feelings for you. To be fair, Gwen started to say to Bridget Naruto would seem more likely to write it since he is half Japanese than Jeff. Okay, you have a point there. Bridget said before shooting a look at Jeff. What? Jeff asked. I seem to recall a certain comment about what you that was romantic in the form of written words. Bridget said crossing her arms and kept the look. Jeff recalled what he said and winced, okay, not my best moment. Yeah, maybe it's for me. Bridget perked up as she takes the letter from Gwen before the goth girl take it back. Nah, it's totally for me. They starts to argue over it before both of them accidentally ripped it in half. Tell you what, Betty, I bet you two nights desert that the poem was for me. Oh, I'm up for that. Down with that. Bridget was not sure how she can phase it. Whatever. You're on. They both never noticed that Chef was rolling his eyes with a shaking head. Lashana smirked at them. Does that mean you two owe me dessert? She teased. You didn't bet on it. Gwen teased back getting laughs from the girls. Outside. Now, remember, ground teams can wheelie the sofa beds whatever they want in order to help their comrade with the landing. Chris reminded the campers as Trent and DJ boarding the airplane. Sayonara, Trent. Heather waving her hand with a smirk. I hope your attempts to impress weird goth girl are worth the chalk outline. Trent and Gwen glanced at the ground to see a chalk outline. 
drawn by Heather. Uh, did you ever think that maybe Trent's doing this as a form of self-expression, like haiku? Gwen smiled wide smile at confusing musician as some campers gave her a weird look and Bridget shake her head with a smirk. Or not. Gwen sighed, little embarrassing. That was your big idea, to get him, to say he wrote the poem? Heather asked with a sneer. Not only did it make you look like an idiot, but it was so random and made no sense to even make the comparison. You finished? Gwen deadpan at Heather. Only because if I was allowed to go on, we would never finish the episode. Up in the air, DJ and Trent gulps as they look down at the ground, miles away from them, before Chris presented them the waivers with a grin. If you could just fill these out. What? DJ stuttered. We already signed the insurance forms in the beginning of the show. Yeah, but these are for organ donation. Chris answered with a chuckle. I have this cool cannibal challenge I want to pitch to the producers, and this will go a long way toward budgeting free props. You think he was joking? DJ asked. It's Chris. Trent replied. Good point. The boys stared at the host with disgusted expressions and dropped jaws. Here comes the drop, boys. I don't see the drop zone. Trent said with squirted eyes. Push, put your backs into it. Duncan grunted. Why is this thing so heavy? Anyone seen Big O? Databeo? Naruto said before the base look over the sofa to see Owen sleeping on the bed. Owen giggled sheepishly as he gotten looks sorry. At least it was their bed. Heather muttered even if it didn't matter. Duncan sighed. Looks like we'll draw a target mark on him for DJ. Anyone have red paint or anything? Is it me or did anyone else hear screaming? Bridget asked and everyone look up to see screaming Trent plummeting before crashed into the ground, causing a trent size hole. Everyone winced, expect for Izzy as she laughed like mad crying encore. Again, again, you had terrible luck with injuries this season, Justin could not help but point out. I wasn't all 100% back after the puffer fish, so I might not have been able to do any good. Heather noticed another text which read, ouch, that had to hurt. Oh man, he's going to feel this in the morning. Lashana said as the gophers ran over to check on their injured gophers. The base team went before pushing their sofa bed, hoping it won't happen to DJ too. It wasn't long enough until Bridget glanced at Naruto and speaking to him. You know what's really romantic? Um, the redhead blinked. I'm not sure. A date that a girl can enjoy, I guess? Hmm. Yeah, but actually I was thinking more of the writing word. Bridget said, and the redhead tilted his head. Bridget sent a look at Jeff again, who avoided her eyes, and said nothing. Like a love letter or something. Databeo? Naruto scratched his head. Hmm. I'm kind of bad with these things, so I have no clue. Goman. Bridget was about to say something, but a scream cut her off as the bass looked up to see DJ floating around with his parachute. Go! 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 Duncan barked as the team quickly pushes the sofa bed before DJ landed on top of Owen, waking the oaf up in process. Huh? Everything's still here? The giant checked himself as he hop off the sofa bed and give out a sigh, relive that he made it in one piece. DJ did the same, seeing his counterpart was alright. Thanks, Owen. Owen nodded even if he didn't do anything. Gophers lose! Chris shouted out of his megaphone as the plane flew over the campers. Base win. One to zero.